So after that little bit of motivation, let's go on to the first part of our course that's called MPU, MCU, and SOC. Well, I always say that you can't start any lecture in VLSI and chip design, anything about semiconductors, without remembering our good old friend Moore. And I really like this kind of slide that I found from Raghunathan in ECE 695R, where he shows that in 2014, there were 1.2 sextillion transistors in the world. And it started, you know, in around 1958 when the first integrated circuits were made by Jack Kilby and by Robert Noyce. And, um, and it, you know, it got to the point where in 2013, and that's already quite a long time ago, you know, we're talking about 10 years, we already had multi-billion transistor chips. Uh, you know, that's a 3 billion fold increase in just 55 years, and it's kept on growing since then. Just to get some more perspective of, uh, about that, in 2004, there were more transistors than the grains of rice harvested during that year. And a million times estimated number, uh, a million times the estimated number of ants on the earth. And I just hope that you don't have any ants in your rice uh, like you have transistors. So we have all those transistors, but the question is, you know, what do we do with them all? So really, there are two ways that, you know, you could look at scaling and what you do with it. The first scaling option, which was really used for many, many, many years, is what we call component-driven scaling. And that's where we build, you know, these main kind of chips like microprocessors, like GPUs. Um, before something like 2005, what we used to do is continue with, you know, these cool computer architectures that would have deeper pipelines, more complex logic for instruction level parallelism, more cache. And that was the way that we used to get more and more um, uh, performance out of these, uh, out of these main, you know, microprocessors and GPUs. From 2005 and on, um, we actually had a big change in the, in, in the industry and how things were built. And basically what we've been doing is adding more cores and more memory onto the chip. For memory chips, it was really easy, you know, DRAMs, flashes, and so forth. We just keep increasing capacity. You can never have enough memory. But Actually, what happened was with, you know, this, uh, this scaling and being able to make chips with more and more functionality and more and more options and getting cheaper and cheaper, what we are able to do is take a system-driven scaling approach. And that means that we can integrate more and more system functions onto a chip and we can get all these embedded systems that we have all over and uh, surrounding us in life nowadays that just have, you know, different types of things that, that, that used to be um, these systems that were made up of multiple components and so, so forth, we were able to stuff them on a, on a small microchip and really be able to get real cool functionality. It got to the point where, you know, a, a vast majority of all computing systems today are embedded inside these um, different types of functions that we have around here. Maybe the, the, nowadays you could call it the Internet of Things. So going into the name of this section, MPU, MCU, and SOC, I want to introduce these three terms. MPU is a microprocessor. That's a computer processor where the data processing logic and control is included on a single integrated circuit. And, you know, probably the most famous microprocessor of all is the, is the Intel 4004. That was the original microprocessor. It was a very, very, you know, cool project where uh, basically Intel, which was a DRAM company at the time and making um, some sort of calculator with uh, four chips inside, the 4001, 2, 3, and they decided to make the microprocessor on one monolithic chip, um, the 4004. It was just a four-bit chip, so it was a tiny little thing, and you see in this dual inline package over here. But it really made Intel what it was and is for the next, you know, many decades, and and the the dominant leader and the really the, the 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 company that brought forth the CPU and computing what we have today. So that's the Intel 4004, and really a a, a real important type of chip that we have in our history. The second chip I wanted to show you was jumping from that 4-bit Intel 4004, we go to the first 32-bit microprocessor, which was the Bell Mac 32. And um, there's a reason I'm telling you about this, and, and, and the reason I put this picture on, and it's a very strange picture to select for a microprocessor. But actually what this picture is, is the team that designed the Bell Mac. And I heard about it in a, in a great um, talk back in 2012 from one of the you know leaders of the project, a guy named Steve Kong, who um, later on became a very big and famous professor, um, including the president of KAIST, one of the you know top technical universities in the world in Korea. And um, he told me that, you know, 
that the word tape out, which we all know is from sending, you know, our GDS files to the fabrication plant by putting it on a magnetic tape. Well, he claims that it wasn't from that at all. He claims that it was from the fact that they used to plot um, all of the layout of the chip and then take these plots and, and tape them together and put them on the floor of some big hall over here, which we see inside uh, one of the AT&T buildings. And that, then they went with uh, magic markers and traveled along each and every line. And that's how they did their LVS comparison. And amazing, and this is a picture of that plot that they did with this first 32-bit microprocessor um, with a real interesting story, and you can read about it online. I uh, had the luck to hear it firsthand from Steve Kong. And, um, and really, uh, this is a picture that I found about what he was talking about at the time. And I just wanted to tell you that I had the very great luck of um, not only meeting Steve Kong, I got to know him and take him and his wife, Mia, around. And this is us at the Dead Sea back in 2012. And uh, really one of the great people in the, in the history of the development of the microprocessor and all together um, in, in, in research and computer engineering and electrical engineering. And I just wanted to show you, if we already showed the 4-bit Intel 4004, which was the first microprocessor, and the 32-bit Bell Mac 32, which was the first 32-bit microprocessor, then the AMD Opteron is really the first 64-bit x86 microprocessor. And nowadays, really, most of our microprocessors that we're, we're buying you know, for our main computers are 64 bits. So that is the microprocessor. And what is an MCU, a microcontroller? Well, a microcontroller is, I guess you could say, the next step up. It's a small computer that we are able to stick on a single integrated circuit chip. And a microcontroller, it will contain one or more CPUs, along with some memory and some programmable input and output peripherals. So if the CPU really, the, the, the MCU or the M MPU or CPU that we showed before is just, you know, all it is is one CPU, um, well, a microcontroller has a bit more. We integrate a few more things on the chip and provide, you know, a, a little system for going and doing things. So the first high volume microcontroller was the TITMS 1000 that you can see over here uh, a long time ago. But the, the really probably best known microcontroller is the PIC. And the PIC, back in 2013 already, over 12 billion parts were sold. So this was a really, or still is, a really popular system that sold all over the place. And I just wanted to show that, you know, one of the popular kind of microcontroller boards or systems that people use nowadays that makers use, because it's really easy to start with and to, to, to get into the, the field, is the um, Arduino. And here is a, a picture of the Arduino Uno, and it uses the Atmega 328P on it as its uh, main chip microcontroller. So if we talked about MPUs and MCUs, let's go over to, you know, the culmination of the three of the two of them, which is the system on chip, the SOC. A system on chip is an integrated circuit that integrates all or most of the components of a computer or other electronic system. So it integrates an MCU, an MPU, or perhaps several processor cores with peripherals like a GPU, Wi-Fi, cellular or radio modems, and one or more coprocessors. And these will all be on a single substrate or microchip. So it's basically, uh, you could say, it's kind of like a microcontroller on steroids. An SOC can be seen as integrating a microcontroller with more advanced peripherals. And probably the first um, system on chip or what is considered the first one is this Intel 5810 watch. So it was in 1974 and they built, you know, a whole system on a single chip for a watch. But really, um, these things grew and uh, with the, the scaling and with Moore's law, we were able to really make our first large scale SOC um, much later at the AMD 286ZXLX. And of course, when we talk about, you know, Apple with their, their great uh, chip design that they've been doing in the last few years. A couple of years ago, they announced the Apple M1, the first Apple Silicon Mac, and that's really an amazing system on chip that um, has is powering up our our, our new you know Apple type uh, uh, machines today. So if we started with this, uh, you know, very simple kind of four-bit micro, uh, micro uh, processor, the Intel 4004, we moved on to, you know, taking different types of things like A to D converters and some memory and so forth, sticking them out on a chip and calling this a microcontroller. Well, when we go to really complex things, then we're already calling it a system on a chip. And we're going to go into throughout this course, what are the components on the system on a chip, how they work, what the whole stack is all about. So just to summarize that, a CPU is 
I guess a single processor core nowadays, you know, we sell CPUs with mini cores on them. It's used for general purpose. Really, it can be programmed to do anything. And it needs to be supported with memories and IOs because just as a CPU standing alone, it can't do much. Um, a microcontroller, it usually has a single or more than one processor core in the middle that kind of controls everything, but we add to it, you know, memory blocks, basic IOs, other basic peripherals, and it's used for basic control purposes, all kinds of embedded applications. Microcontrollers are really popular for um, creating embedded applications. A system on chip is already something that's much more complex and bigger. We try to stick as many components as possible on the same integrated circuit. So it has one or more processors. It has larger memory blocks, variety of IOs and other peripherals. It's integrated with more powerful blocks. Maybe we put a GPU or a DSP on the same chip. It's usually capable of running, you know, operating systems like Linux or, or, uh, or something like that. Some. Some are and some aren't. And it's mainly used for advanced applications, smartphones, and tablets. I guess this is kind of a, a type of a classification, but really, probably most of the chips we're making, even those, you know, kind of Intel or AMD CPUs, they're actually system on chip. They have a lot more stuff on them. But um, really, when we start putting a lot of the components, we'll sell it or, or call it a system on a chip versus when the main thing in the middle is the CPU, we're just going to call it a, a CPU chip. So what are the advantages of really moving over to a system on a chip, uh, sticking as much as we can on the same chip, we get higher performance, we get better power efficiency, lower cost, lighter footprint, and higher reliability versus the limitations, which usually this SOC is going to be somehow application specific because we're only going to put on, you know, the things that we actually want to use in whatever application we're going for. Um, and therefore, it's less flexible. And of course, because we put so many things on the same chip, it's going to be very complex. Um, but really, I think that the advantages overtake the, the limitations, and system on chips have come to, to dominate the world today. I will um, take a step back over here, and recently with, uh, you know, the kind of limitations or slowing down of Moore's Law that we've had, we've gone actually back in a way to something that we call chiplets, where we're making several smaller chips, maybe in different process technologies, and then packaging them inside the same package to uh, achieve the large functionality that, that we wanted. But you you could also um, just put this in the same category as a real large-scale SOC. The fact that it won't be maybe on one monolithic piece of silicon um, due to all kinds of manufacturing limitations or cost effectiveness, it still has the same type of approach, putting as much as possible within you know one single like uh, little system that we sell as one piece.